Hello and welcome back to Lumar City. Let's begin with some music, I guess, huh? Alright, music it is. We're gonna have to type it in. News uh, open. There we go. Oh gosh, I'm gonna throw up. I just ate a banana. Oh, but it looked kind of weird on the outside. Oh, you know, it's one of those organic ones. Oh my gosh. Look <laughs> at things growing on it. Oh gosh. Um, I don't know, maybe it wasn't organic. I, I, I kind of th I thought it was organic, and then I was like, oh god, it doesn't look organic. I don't know. I don't know if it's organic or not. Oh, but I got to throw up. Like, for real, not like for f fake real, you know? Have you ever seen me throw up, like, my face when I'm doing the sound? <sighs> it's really, I'm not, if, if you really thought I was throwing up, that's just amazing. I can't believe I did that good a job. You're just, you were just being nice in the comments. I appreciate that. Thanks, guy. All right, well, um, who's next? Who's next? Um, McGee, McGee, Poldo. You are next. All right, let's see what you got. Nocturne Opus <coughs> Ten. Oh, oh, nasty. Oh, it's belched everywhere. All right, now to know the work of free number combat line. God, I still feel bad. But this music will cheer me up. Oh, nice. Louis Sorrow. Louis Sorrow. Performed this piece most expertly. We'll listen to a recording. Ah, oh, yes. Nocturne. Uh, Nocturne. Opus 10. Leopold Miguez wrote his Nocturne Opus 10 at the height of his career. It was first executed by Arthur Napoleon in 1886 and has since become his most performed piece. Yeah, it's the only one I've heard of. And I hadn't heard of anything till now. More. Leopoldo Miguez was a presenting composer. Born in the Thaloi, Miguez studied at conservatories in Paris. He is known as a champion of the music of Richard Wagner. As if Richard Wagner needed yet another champion! He also directed the Instituto Nacional de Musica. He also wrote the music for Brazil's hymn for the proclamation of the Republic. He died in Rio de Janeiro. A city. Brazil. Pretty famous big city in Brazil, you know, where Carnival happens. Or I don't know, maybe Carnival happens in other cities in Brazil. It's just the one you hear about because it's like the biggest or something. Big celebration. All right, I'm feeling good, I guess. And I slept for... Seven-ish hours, I guess. Yeah, that's one way to calculate it. Now, I got up at eight first, and I was all like, oh, it's too early. So, I don't know if you count that, you know, maybe that takes off an hour, the fact that I got up prematurely and... Oh, shut up, shut up! Oh, whoa, 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 okay. Yes. Yeah, we can't, we can't ruin the music. Would you shut up, Dad, if you want to ruin the music? I'll be quiet. No, I won't. I'll just... Well, I'm kind of being quiet. I guess I'll be quiet, yeah. Well, rather than being quiet, I'm limiting the dynamic range of my voice so that you can listen to both my voice and the music at a comfortable volume. Or at least that is the hope. Of course, I should probably turn it up a little bit more so that the difference between my voice and the music is less as well. You know, it doesn't really matter how loud I talk or how loud... The music is, or how loud anything is. 
well, I, I, it does. If it explodes the microphone, it'd be bad. But generally, it wouldn't matter because you, you wouldn't be that volume for you. It would be the volume for you, whatever volume you choose it to be. Uh, unless your computer isn't capable of reproducing the volume necessary for your preferred hearing. Well, in which case, it's not really a computer, it's more your speakers, but... Fail. Oh my gosh. This game and me are just so, 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 so disconnected. <sighs> Ooh, speed pack. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Is that what it is? The games I do well at, I have fun with. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if that's all... My my skills, my parent skills in any game. I wonder if that's all it is. I have fun here, so I do well. Is that is that really all there is to it? Should I just devote myself not to doing well, but to having fun in every game? But then that can't work for every game, because there was that one game where I pff, absolutely did not have fun, where I had to pinch myself when I did wrong in order to focus. Remember Observation Tower? But maybe that was, maybe, maybe that was an outlier. Well, whatever the case, I mean, like a beautiful. But now, oh, fail. But now we get to ramble. Ha <laughs> ha Well, you don't. Well, I mean, you could. But if you're rambling over my rambling, then let's be serious. Nothing is going to be heard straight now. Nothing. Uh, we're, we're going to definitely, definitely talk, be talking over each other. And, yeah, nothing ever is going to get heard and listened to. Uh, so, anyway, why don't I just tell you about my life at the moment? My life? The only part of it that matters, that is, which is the part of it where I'm playing a new game that is, um, just come and just came out, I guess. I don't really know if it just came out. But I know that I just now playing. It just came out free on Steam, so I'm just now playing it. It's called what is it called again? It's been Parabox Studios. <laughs> Parabox Studios. <laughs> or is it Paradox Studios? It might be Paradox. Anyway, what is it? It's Europa Ultimate Four or something. Europa Ultimate, isn't it? Europa. Something about that. Something about Europe and ultimate. Ah, fail. Something about Europa and something. Fail. No. Anyway, it's a grand strategy game, but it looks just like Crusader Kings, <laughs> and I hated doing Crusader Kings. <laughs> to me, that was the most. That had to be one of the most pointless games I've ever played. I mean, I get, I get what it's about. I get it. Well, I probably don't get it. I thought I got it. I probably didn't. It's probably a great game, but I just never understood it. That might be possible. But the way that I thought I got it was that it was a game about people in the game. It was about characters in the game and their lives and directing their lives, directing diplomacy among people, directing, uh, just people. <laughs> people? That's pointless. What, what do people matter for? What, what, what do I care about that for? Yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard to get by. I just, hard to be interested in all these people, you know? I'd rather be dealing with nations. Civilizations. It's just I like the, the premise of, of civilization better than than pe than people. It's just you know kings versus. It's just, I, it, I just don't like kings in the first place. I guess. I mean, there's just kings. Kings. We don't even have kings anymore because they're not good enough for us. No, now we have better systems than kings. So, so what's interesting about a king? Huh? That stuff's illegal now. In many places around the world. And places that are, where it isn't illegal, 
They certainly don't have the power they used to. They're not leaders anymore. So, yeah. Just not a very interesting game for me. But grand strategy, that's, um, that sounds more like a total war kind of thing. And I kind of like total war, I just wasn't very good at it. I, um, yeah, I was pretty bad at total war. But I kind of liked the, I mean, I kind of liked how, I kind of liked, I mean, well, I think total war was not quite as much grand strategy. It had elements of grand strategy. I didn't think it had many elements. So I've never played a legit grand strategy game, and I, I'm, I'm, that's going to be fun. But I hate that it looks like Crusader Kings, because I really, really found nothing fun about that game. <laughs> I tried. I played it. I, well, I played through the tutorial. Maybe that's what it was. I got bogged down in the tutorial. By the time I was done with the tutorial, there wasn't anything. And there was hardly any more time I had to left to play the actual game. Hmm, yeah, that might have been it. Alright, but no doubt you want to hear about something else. So, let's say you are you just got into a plane, alright? So, a few things involved in starting it up. First of all, you're going to want to turn the master switch on. Basically, all that is, is, uh, you know, it's just the power switch. It just turns the battery on. You're not, probably not going to get very far if the battery... And electrical systems are not turned off because you, you know you don't need them on for the engine to be on you will need them on to turn the starter on then unless you want to get out and well with the magnetos on well you need the magnetos on to turn the engine on that will have to be on unless you want to turn the magnetos on get out of the plane and, and just spin the pop around with your hands with the pulse boo that they'll get chopped off when it starts yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. Or you could get a friend to do it, which is much, much safer and, and, and totally recommended. You should definitely be in the plane. Someone must be in the plane when you're cranking the prop. That, that's a bad idea. Being outside the plane, there was inside, cranking the prop. Bad. That's a recipe for disaster. I've heard. I've never done it before. <laughs> but I've heard that's a bad idea. Anyway, so you got your engine. Okay, yeah, you want to turn the magnetos, master switch on, master switch. Yeah, that, that does control the starter, but it doesn't control the engine. Engine and mag. Uh, that, that's controlled by the magnetos. But of course, the magnetos don't draw power from the battery. The magnetos draw power from the engine. The engine is a fully contained. The engine is fully contained, it produces all the power that it needs to run. And the alternator charges the battery. But if the battery were to fail, the engine would be fine. So, yeah. Anyway, that's going to wrap this episode up. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, pff, I hope there was something enjoyable about it. If there was, let me know. And I'll try to give you more of that. Because I, pff, I really don't know what that would have been. So do tell me. But do tell me where I asked you to tell me that. Because otherwise, I won't understand why you're telling me that what to do better. I'll think, oh, you... You thought I wasn't good enough in this episode. You thought I was really booming. You say I was in public. You thought I So do, do, do tell me that I actually did tell you and, and tell me where it was. So just to clear up any confusion because I won't remember where I'd ask you for that. But any episode, just you can just go ahead and, and, and tell me what I could do better. Just do tell me where you... God, if, I don't know. I don't, whatever. But if it isn't, if it doesn't make sense in context, don't, don't link it to a part of the video. It just, you know, sometimes people are like, <laughs> when you said blah. And I'm like, where did I say blah? If that was so funny, I want to laugh at that too. But where did I say blah? So do, if you're going to laugh at some part of the video, to tell me what it is. Anyway, anyway, I'll say anything about any part of the video that is relevant to the video. Just don't tell me what part of the video is about, but there's a long video. You can't just talk about it, the whole thing together, can you? I guess you could, but if you're going to not do... Uh, blah! Bye!